What's up everybody, this is Ed for my Bring Back. We're going to do a quick video tutorial here for a visualization in R. And the kind of visualization we're going to make is called a tree map. Now, it's a tree map, you might well ask, and it's a method for displaying hierarchical data by using nested rectangles. And the size of these nested rectangles will be relevant to some quality of that data. So I've got some play data. Let's take a look. Alrighty, so I've got my script over here on the left hand side of my screen. Let's take a look at what it's got. We're going to load up our library, which is called TreeMap, not surprisingly. If you don't have this package installed, go ahead and do so using that install packages function we've shown you so many times. And then we're going to load up some data here in the uh, my home directory. I've got a file called uspop.csv. So we'll load that up and let's just pop over here and take a quick look at it. And we'll see it's got four columns and that each of these columns represents a different quality of a given state. So we've got which region the state belongs to and which division the state belongs to. Both of those come from the United States Census geographies. So uh, each, uh, each state belongs to one of several regions. Each of those regions has smaller divisions. And then we have a population for each state as well. So you can see how this is hierarchically structured data. Each state belongs to a division group. Each division group then belongs to a region group. No state belongs to more than one division or region and no division belongs to more than one region. So they nest within each other quite comfortably. So we have 50 states. We may actually have uh, Puerto Rico or DC in here. Let's take a look actually. Let's look at the dimensions of US pop and find out. 51. So I'm guessing that's DC. We'll take a look when we actually generate this tree map. So we'll have those rectangles nested by their geograph geographic assignments and then sized by their population. So that's exactly how we do this. We're going to run the tree map function over here. And the first argument we give it is the data frame we're referencing. Then the next argument is the index, which lists in order the columns in that data frame that have the categories going from the highest level of abstraction, the largest categories, to the smallest categories, or, or just the individual uh, rectangles we're going to be making. So we have region, then division, then state. And the third argument I'm going to pass, tree map, is the V size, which is to say how big the rectangles ought to be. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what we get. Here is our tree map. I'll show you something goofy about R that we can talk about in a later video, which is graphical parameters. We use the default parameters there. If we resize this to be full screen and go back right here real quick and rerun this line, you'll see it populates the entire screen. And so this is our tree map. We have the south, the west, the midwest, the northeast. And those are the four uh, regions of this country. And then within the south, for example, we have the south Atlantic, the west south central, and the east south central. Those are the three divisions within the south. And just to take a look at the east south central, that contains the states Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky, and Mississippi. Those states have rectangles representing them, which are sized by the state's population. So those states are you know, looking close in population would appear to our naked eye here that Mississippi has a smaller population than the other states within the east south central division of the south census region. So, not too bad. Obviously, we have some issues here, though. It looks like we have some uh, labels overriding each other, and perhaps there are some other things we'd like to tighten up. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time with you here looking at how we can use some other parameters of this tree map function to get a prettier result. Okay, and we'll see here I have commented out a couple lines that I've written previously which define something called label align. Label align is a list. Uh, this list has three vectors in it. Each vector has two smaller character vectors, call them strings, that's fine. Uh, left center, left top, and right bottom. And those are in order where within the relevant rectangles the tree map function is going to put the uh, label for that rectangle. So for the largest, most abstract portion of it, in our case, the census region, it'll look to put it in the left hand side. 
halfway between the top and bottom, so left and center. For the division rectangles, it's going to try the left top. And for the state rectangles, it's going to try the right bottom. So we define that ahead of time. We make this list ahead of time so that we can feed it in to the DreamMap function later on. That way the labels will be less likely to fight each other for space. Next thing I've got going on here is I'm opening up a PNG uh, interface so that I can save the output. Now, this is something we'll address more thoroughly in later videos, but all that's happening here is instead of writing to my default graphical device, instead of uh, putting it just in a window on the screen, I'm going to put it in a PDF document that we can review at a later time. So this is obviously an exciting capability R has. We'll explore it in later videos, but for now, just you can see I'm making a PDF which has resolution equal to the size of screen I'm doing this on, and I'm giving it a file name. So it's going to go just to my home directory, just to the documents directory here. So let's take a look at how we change the tree map function to make a little bit of a prettier file. Okay, so the first several arguments remain unchanged. We've got United States population, the index is the same, the V size is the same. Next up we have a title for it, so that's relatively intuitive what that's going to be. It's good to title your graphics. Got the font size for the title, and then we have font size for the labels. Like the other arguments we've given the functions here, you can see uh, they go in order. So the biggest labels are going to be our regions, the next size down uh, will be our divisions, and then the states labeled in size 20 uh, font size. The font face argument you can look up, but those numbers, 2, 3, and 1, are going to represent whether the text is bold or italicized or both or, or neither. And that helps us once again differentiate between the varying levels of abstraction. And then we say align.labels is equal to label align. That's that list we made previously that should put them in good places. So let's go ahead and just run this little section here. And it's throwing us errors. I wonder what's going on. Figured out what the difficulty was. I was trying to save that PNG into a directory to which R did not have write privileges. So I've specified here that we're going to save that PNG just into the documents folder. And I've done so using this tilde, which people who are using non Windows operating systems may be familiar with, but that's shorthand in this case for your home directory, My Documents and Windows. And so it's going to put it in that My Documents folder, and that will enable it to write without encountering permission difficulties. Let's reselect those lines and run it. You can see things go off without a hitch. Let's retrieve that file and show it to you. And here in all of its glory is the tree map that we've made. You'll see the positions of the region labels and the division labels and the state labels are as we asked for them to be. You see the font face has changed. You see we have our nice title at the top. Now obviously this is not the most beautiful graphic ever created, but we're a lot farther along than we were when we started. And there are more parameters you can toy with and change to get things to like to look how you like. So that's a brief overview for how to make a tree map in R. Again, this is Ed from my Bring Back. Really enjoying myself making these videos. Hopefully you guys are learning something. Keep coming back. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll keep pumping you full of knowledge. We'll take a look at how to save graphics in the next couple of videos here.